questions uh, that uh, maybe we did not have the time uh, to ask uh, in the first part of the morning. I think that one of the interesting things that we learned in the morning uh, is uh, the use uh, of this uh, new diagnostic means uh, and particularly uh, laser confocal microscopy. And uh, there were some uh, uh, questions also after the presentation of uh, Francesca. So uh, I asked Francesca to uh, maybe give more details and present a couple of more cases uh, about the differential diagnosis uh, of uh, uh, nevi and malignant melanoma. So I think we can start with your cases, Francesca. So I will present some cases uh, to focalize our attention in uh, the practical, in the use of the confocal laser microscopy in the clinical practice. So uh, that's uh, an abdo abdomen of a young uh, man. And uh, he uh, didn't uh, remember if the lesion uh, is, uh, was present uh, from uh, many years or if the lesion, or if the lesion is uh, recent. That is the clinical image, and uh, this is uh, the videodermoscopy image. I don't know how many of you know the videodermoscopy, but uh, anyway, uh, this uh, lesion uh, has uh, some criteria uh, not uh, so good, like uh, the asymmetrical uh, distribution of the pigment and uh, something at the periphery that uh, isn't uh, so regular. So, in uh, our clinical practice, uh, if uh, we saw a lesion like this, uh, probably if uh, if no, isn't possible to have confocal laser microscopy, probably we remove uh, it. But la, if we have confocal laser microscopy, we can see this image. That uh, are the image of the lesion at the first, on the left, at the epidermal layer, and the second at dermal epidermal junction. Uh, I have uh, shown this morning the principal feature of uh, confocal laser microscopy, in particular of the melanoma clues. In this case, uh, isn't possible to see uh, melanoma clues, fortunately, but uh, uh, we can uh, see a regular epidermi, uh, epidermal pattern that it's called on a combat pattern without any atypia and uh, regular uh, dermal epidermal junction without any atypia. This uh, pattern at the dermal epidermal junction is called uh, ring pattern because it seems to be s ring and the ring are regular, very bright, because uh, are the horizontal view of the uh, dermal epidermal junction. So the melanocyte distributed along the junction in the horizontal view of confocal laser microscopy appear like ring. So uh, we can't remove the lesion because it's a simple nevi. The second case, it's uh, a photo da I think that uh, we can discuss a little bit about this case, uh, which is an equivocal case. So you have uh, morphologically and uh, just uh, at uh, videodermoscopy the doubt that it might be a melanoma. And if you didn't have any other means uh, of diagnosis, you would uh, uh, excise this. And uh, I would like to ask the surgeon, do you use a different surgical approach in uh, lesions which are not, uh, let's say, overt melanoma. So do, do you use uh, very, let's say, uh, narrow margins in this case, uh, or you go directly as if it was a melanoma? No, then for, for certain we would not take any very large margins in, in a case where it was uncertain. So of all the cases that are actually overt uh, melanoma in our clinical view, one third actually turns out to be something else or benign. So um, I would say always try to, to be err on the, the cautious side and, and just take the narrow margin. Okay. 
So it's difficult to, to, to decide also in the overt case uh, that it is a melanoma. And I, I also wanted to ask the pathologist, uh, because you show that some of uh, the views that you can have uh, on the, let's say, in vivo microscopy, then reflects the pathological pattern of the disease. Uh, have you done any studies that correlate uh, this view with the pathological view, for example, the melanocytic infiltration of the dermis? In this case, uh, the correlation with uh, histopathology is easy because probably, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, pigmentation is only transepidermal production of melanin. In fact, uh, in the uh, uh, confocal laser microscopy image, we can see very bright melanocytic uh, cells either in the superficial epidermidis and then at the dermal epidermal junction. Like uh, can we see here, the all are keratinocyte with a lot of melanin. And also the rim of the ring appear very, very bright. That means that uh, these keratinocytes uh, of epidermidis and the melanocyte uh, alo uh, along the dermal epidermal junction are with, uh, uh, epide uh, with melanin. Uh, there is uh, a transepidermal production of melanin. And so this uh, pattern in video dermoscopy, it's only a transepidermal production of melanin. That's the correlation between uh, confocal laser microscopy and histopathological uh, images. That in this case, I haven't uh, the histopathological imaging, but uh, uh, also because uh, we didn't remove the lesion. But anyway, it's easy to correlate the hyperreflective hyper uh, keratinocyte and uh, uh, the hyperreflective rim of the ring with uh, the melanocyte that in this case aren't atypical because there isn't no features of atypia. And what are the main uh, problems for the pathologists in these, uh, let's say, cases? Well, actually, that would, would have been my comment about this. Um, I mean, you usually don't remove this kind of lesion, so it's hard to make a correlation for extremely benign lesion where you have this kind of, 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 of pattern. But uh, whether you, I mean, there is, I know, mm, a strong correlation between the images that you can see with confocal microscopy and uh, histology. But I, I, may I have one, qu one question for you. So about the resolution power of this, uh, of your techniques. So how confident you are in, in say that you are looking at nests or melanocytes in case of melanocytic probably I don't know if you are going to to show some positive positive cases about that so, uh, so the power of the resolution is more or less similar the histological one uh, anyway it uh, uh, seems uh, to be uh, keratinocytes in the epidermidis and uh, uh, melanocyte at junction. We can be sure that uh, the, the cells aren't atypical. That's uh, the, ma the main important things. Because, uh, like I will show in the second case, uh, the, melano the melanocytic uh, with uh, atypia it's very, very uh, different from the normal cells. So probably that's our, these are sorry, keratinocytes. And this is uh, melanocytic uh, along the retirage. Anyway, there isn't atypia, that's the important thing, because uh, isn't visible dark nuclei and isn't visible uh, very bright cytoplasm. In general, atypical cells are, are like I showed this morning, or randish or dendritic, and are very, very visible, because are bigger tha than the normal one. Uh, How big uh, you go? Um, 200 nanometer. Yes. It, it then depends on the site because where the epidermis is, is more thin or thick, you can, but more or less, uh, the power of resolution stop at the upper dermis. In you fact, that is the junction, and then we can have a third level of acquisition, upper dermis. But in general, for the diagnosis, the most important are the first two uh, level of acquisition. You have already some experience for some years. Yeah. Have you followed up these cases, which... In this case, yes. Not only this case, ah, no, in, in general, yes. Have you yes. got a result of follow-up, Then up, I have, uh, yes, uh, is uh, the specificity of uh, sensibility of the instrument I showed this morning, so isn't perfect. There is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But anyway, uh, the specificity of confocal laser microscopy is very similar to the videodermoscopy. Uh, the sensitivity is uh, higher, so it's important for not uh, in removing uh, unnecessary excision. With improvement of techniques, al always sensitivity is increasing and specificity is decreasing. That's, that's a usual thing, I mean. Uh, but the specificity is very important also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for uh, reducing also surgical activity, reducing also, save money also, because uh, reducing uh, surgical activity. Because if it's a benign lesion and uh, we can decide with confocal laser micro, we are doing now an, an article about uh, the economics uh, question in confocal laser microscopy. Because we calculated that uh, we can save a lot of money is important for the national health system in Italy to reducing the surgical activity. It's uh, very, very important. We have do a, s a study together, a statistic, um, and uh, seems to redu reduce a lot of money in our uh, azienda ospedaliera, it's called our uh, uh, hospital. Are you inviting these patients back, I mean, to follow up, to check for, I mean, in the case of development for yeah. these lesions of melanoma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, in general, in case like that, that seems to be not uh, so good at videodermoscopy, but uh, the uh, confocal laser microscopy, it's okay, and so make us uh, confidential. Anyway, we will do follow-up because uh, isn't a perfect technique. So anyway, if I see a lesion not good in video dermoscopy, but confocal say, no, the lesion it's okay. Anyway, I'll program a follow-up. So then uh, as, as a surgeon, I'd, I'd like to be an advocate of the devil in this case, because the machine costs 150,000 euros. So what is then the num <laughs> what is then the number needed to treat so how many cases of excisions do you save? Because an excision by me only costs a few tens of euros for some sutures and but some cutting time. But we have, uh, uh, in this article that is in press, uh, we have uh, calculated that uh, uh, more or less uh, we uh, save 250.000 euros. Uh, to, to so I it's, uh, uh, anyway, yeah. 250.000 <coughs> Yes. Probably depends on the amount of patients you treat, uh, but uh, if you save, uh, let's say, 250,000, that's you. Uh, and the cost 100. Cost 150. Yeah. yeah. Probably the, the big clinics so where you have a lot of, uh, you know, dubious uh, case, maybe yeah. that's. Yeah. In fact, uh, my professor like to propose this technique in uh, national health with the data, say, cost this, but you save that. So. So you have to consider also the time and money for processing of the samples. It's time consuming for resident in pathologists. <laughs> they take care <laughs> much of their time to process. That's that's true, but then y you don't know, uh, you don't have the the cases where eventually during follow up it turns out that your um, uh, your image was actually a uh, false negative image, and patients turn up to have melanoma when when you excise that, then you do not have any false negatives anymore. Uh, there is another problem. Sometimes uh, uh, the, pa the person didn't uh, be back. So have an exact number of the false negative is uh, a problem. Uh, uh, very frequent uh, when uh, we do article, the review write as uh, the false negative because uh, isn't possible to have a standardized number of false negative because sometimes the patient uh, or we didn't uh, uh, the follow up because I am confident for me is an evus so or the second possibility is that the person didn't came so the false negative is a problem in our okay. technique. Yes, it's good to be. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be critical because, of course, uh, as uh, David said, uh, I mean uh, the high sensitivity is good, but. Uh, if you remain with the specificity, which is uh, so and so, I mean, you yeah. have to pay a cost, of course, for the patients. Yeah. Okay, next case, please, Francesca. The next case is uh, the trunk of the patients with a very visible sun damage. And that's uh, the typical patient of the superficial spreading melanoma, like this morning has been described very well. This is uh, all the trunk and the particular we focalize on 
this lesion that is, is this. So in the videodermoscopy image that I haven't, sorry, the videodermoscopy imaging isn't copy. Uh, in confocal laser microscopy, in this case, is very evident the presence of atypical cells that are uh, both roundish and dendritic. You can see the, cel the cells very well, one is here, you can see very well the dark nuclei and very bright cytoplasm. You can see very well also here, 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 the atypical cells uh, form a nest. So it's uh, no doubt, there isn't no doubt that uh, this is a melanoma. Going deeper, we arrive until uh, uh, upper dermis and uh, it's uh, visible a large number of atypical cells in single cells or in nests. You can see here very well the nest of atypical cells with the dark nuclei and very bright cytoplasm. Also here in nest, here more in single cells. So in this case, there is no doubt to removing. I'm sorry, there is in the video dermoscopy imaging because uh, probably uh, it uh, hasn't been copied. And uh, anyway, that is a melanoma. In case like that, it's very important, the confocal laser microscopy, because in patients with a large number of nevi, there is a surgical problem because uh, uh, should we remove uh, all the nevi because uh, in patients patients like this, uh, the lesions are very frequently uh, with an atypical futures uh, in uh, a, lot, a large number of nevi of an atypical uh, videodermoscopy pattern. So in the lesion, in patients like that, videodermoscopy, uh, confocal laser microscopy is very important because we can't remove uh, all the nevi. And so in, in, a, in, a damage situa in a sun damage situation like that, we can decide which nevi we have to remove. Yeah. Do you want co to comment on that? No, I, I, I think it's, in, in, and I wanted to add already uh, to the previous discussion that we do have also a confocal microscopy at the dermatology at my institute. So we are very, very much interested in the application of these new techniques. Uh, and also, you know, so, so for setting one, the indication, which nevus do you need to excise, which is irregular and, and might turn out to be a malignancy. And also, um, maybe you will get to that later on, uh, for uh, tumors in the head and neck area where excisions are uh, quite morbid because they are the cosmetics, where you for sure will also want to know that you are radical, that you, are, you have a correct margin, uh, that might also be an application for the, the confocal or even for uh, other institutes doing uh, Raman spectroscopy to, to see uh, where what your borders uh, should be. So uh, I think it's a good indication in this case. In case like that, it's uh, very, very clear, the diagnosis, because uh, these cells are uh, yes. typical. Other question from the floor about this or... Okay, maybe you can go with the third okay. case. The third case, uh, it's uh, very interesting. I cover the diagnosis. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting because it's a patient with a previous history of melanoma of the face. Here, you can uh, see here the scar of the previous uh, surgical uh, uh, remo remove. He uh, have more or less uh, three years ago, the previous melanoma, and uh, he came in our uh, ambulatory say uh, that uh, appear this new lesion recur, recur over the previous uh, excision. So that is uh, uh, video dermoscopy isn't uh, a specific. Also uh, an expert video dermoscopist can be able to do a diagnosis because it isn't peculiar of an atypical nevi, but isn't peculiar also for a normal nevi, because there is some pigment in particular in the recurrent nevi, the diagnosis is very difficult because there isn't uh, exact future that can, uh, can be able us to do diagnosis. So consider that his face, he, uh, he has already a previous uh, excision, what uh, can we do? confocal laser microscopy that in this case uh, show 
the same atypical cells like in the uh, I have uh, shown in the previous case you can see very well the dark nuclei the very bright the very bright cytoplasm the cells are bigger than the rest and uh, the cells uh, are also in nest so we have to remove the lesion also if the face also if in video dermoscopy the imaging didn't appear um, a melanoma in fact uh, is a melanoma the histological results we have here the histological results uh, give us the response of a melanoma so consider in this case is a face and then another important problem is the biopsy because in some case where we have some doubt in video dermoscopy uh, examination we can do biopsy but biopsy isn't in all the lesion so you can do biopsy also in a, in an area where there isn't the tumor so uh, in a lesion like that very big of the face uh, you are in doubt you can say I do biopsy and biopsy say nevus because uh, it can uh, we can also do biopsy not in the exact area where the tumor are growing but with confocal laser microscopy we can be certain that it is a melanoma so, so we have to remove all the lesion not only a part or not only a biopsy but to remove all the lesion in fact is a melanoma yes. Francesco do you want to comment a little bit on the histological slide? For biopsy you mean punch biopsy? Punch biopsy, Bio sorry biopsy Punch exactly. biopsy of uh, 4 5 millimeter sometimes give some problem yeah exactly we actually don't, don't like it very much we like more the size surgeons and dermatologists but in case uh, take the in case like that, that is the face <laughs> yeah. is a big, uh, yeah, a big uh, excision yeah that's true what about the um, um, discrimination between in, in case of border borderline lesions I mean we have seen clearly melanoma and a benign nevus. Uh, what about differential diagnosis uh, between, for example, spitzoid melanoma and uh, spitzoid tumor, for example. So you know, when you have, can 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 it help? How how about sensitivity? Well, in uh, in a spitzoid lesion, uh, no. We have uh, some problem uh, in uh, histology, yeah. and we continue to have problem have problems because uh, 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 is particular in a spitzoid lesion. Confocal laser microscopy is uh, particular. Uh, uh, Mm, not uh, we see particular atypical cells also if the lesion is an EVI in a spitz nevus uh, we see uh, atypical cells also if uh, is an EVI so for spitzoid the lesion isn't uh, so accurate it's a pain also yes <laughs> and uh, also we have a problem with uh, also uh, histological examination because there is the problem of uh, spitzoid melanoma <laughs> and uh, in fact, very frequently we uh, do the uh, second examination to Professor Cerroni in Graz, I don't know if you know, to do a second evaluation. Francesco, but this was considered a, um, a recurrence of the primary tumors or a second? No, a recurrence. recurrence. I think it's a recurrence, and yes. So do they perform also the... Sentinel net biopsy? No, in this case no, because it is uh, 0.3. And then the patient, I think, is uh, 73 years old. So in our clinic, uh, up uh, 70 years, we didn't suggest uh, lymph node. Then, if the patient, we, um, we explain all the, 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 the technique and all the problem. In general, my chief uh, suggests us uh, up, uh, in person that are uh, 70 years old or more to not suggest it. Francesca, it's a quite interesting case. Uh, do you know how long it was between the primary melanoma and the local research? Four years. How long? Four, four years. Four years. Okay. And then uh, the first uh, is uh, an insight melanoma. Okay. And uh, the recurrence is uh, uh, 0 0.3. I, is, uh, I have to say that there is uh, some aspect also in video dermoscopy that's uh, suggesting uh, the melanoma because when uh, uh, a nevus, uh, when, uh, uh, when we observe a recurrent nevi, if it's a melanoma, it's growing out of the scar. So that is the scar, the lesion growing out of the scar. So when uh, we saw pigment out of the scar, 
is probably also in Vito Dermoscovi something not good. If the lesion regrowing inside the scar, so probably is the nevi. That's only the criteria in video dermoscopy about recurrent nevi. So for 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 the um, excision uh, and potential central node biopsy in this case, um, so for the head and neck area, a, a central node is often somewhat more complex to do as a surgeon. It's not impossible, but it's it's more complex, and that's because of the the lymph drainage in that area. So you often get clusters of uh, lymph nodes, which ends up ending that you take out seven, ten, maybe more than ten lymph nodes for a staging procedure. Um, and it's more difficult with the with the common use technique of a gamma probe and patent blue, where the patent blue then gets everywhere and you don't uh, anymore uh, recognize the central node between all the other lymph nodes because everything is then blue. Uh, and often it's also quite close to the injection site uh, of, the, of the primary tumor where you're doing your central node biopsy for. So there are uh, other techniques with uh, fluorescent uh, staining used, like the indodyne staining and uh, the use of the sentinella probe, which gives you a sort of 3D imaging of where you can find your central node in the head and neck area. And I would always recommend, uh, if you have a patient with a melanoma in the head and neck, well, this is not an indication because it's only a thin melanoma, but if it was a thicker melanoma, and you would want to stage this patient to then send them to an institute where you have a good head and neck department uh, where they have these uh, techniques to do that, that kind of staging. And about the age, what do you think? Uh, because... Uh, uh, we, we don't really... At in, my general, institute, not of the in, face. In, in general, we don't have an age cutoff uh, for, for staging, but we do, dis we do discuss the, uh, the complications with them. And, uh, would you need a plastic surgeon to address this lesion? It was asked uh, how much uh, was uh, the wider margin that you need to this lesion? So um, in, the, in general, uh, for this case, I would say uh, you would take one centimeters uh, margin at both ends. So you will have a gap of two centimeters. Uh, and for this specific area, uh, I would be able to close it myself. But if it was uh, somewhat more uh, complex, nearer to the eye, for instance, then I would ask my plastic surgeon to add uh, to the surgery to maybe uh, move a little lap uh, from left to right. this is a melanoma because it's recurrent but if it's first uh, like a dermatologist send you the patient who is a newly diagnosed melanoma probably in query and how many millimeters lesions you will take uh, when you will do the biopsy so for the uh, for the diagnostic excision is the question how many millimeters margin would you take or centimeters so i would take two millimeter margin for a diagnostic excision which is easily still uh, to close in the head and neck, but for the re-excision where you have to take the extra margin, then you would consider using a plastic surgeon. I'd like to also to focalize the attention on the correlates with uh, histological image and uh, confocal image. We can see very well all the, the same features in, in the two techniques, how uh, the correlate is so, uh, so nice. For for the non pathologist, can you show us uh, where <laughs> where the tumor is? You can comment uh, yeah. better than me. Well, actually, what she was saying is, is if this is the all the excision, so we have the, uh, the the upper part of the dermis and this is the epidermis. So the nests of malignant cells, we can clearly see here how they. Uh, occupy this space in the nest shape like more or less the one that we can observe in the confocal. So I have just um, a curiosity from experimental point of view. Does it work only on in vivo? No, have you have ever tried in uh, No, no, there is also another machine that mm -hmm. is called confocal laser microscopy ex vivo yeah. that uh, uh, we uh, we have in Team Modena is in Reggio Emilia mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they use uh, during the surgical activity for find the margin. Yeah, that, that the surgeon uh, cut uh, a piece of lesion and my colleague uh, is able to do the examination that is a bit different uh, the technique uh, that uh, in vivo because uh, they uh, call 
color, the piece, and the, then the machine gives the same image of in vivo. And they do during the um, excision of basal cell carcinoma and of also of melanoma. No, 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 <laughs> no, for the moment no, only on the skin. It's, it's another machine with the same cost, so the two machines. <laughs> In Italy, no in, it it's a bit in Italy is uh, present only in Reggio Emilia and uh, we can do a, yeah. um, a comparison with most surgery in this case, yeah. more or less. It's like a most surgery. Other questions, other questions for this technique, Nifla? Uh, you have talked about uh, basal cell tumor and yeah. is it easy to distinguish between basal cell tumor with a pigment uh, and melanoma, is I it uh, easy? Yes, uh, uh, unfortunately I haven't imaging here. Anyway, in uh, confocal, uh, in uh, sorry, basal cell carcinoma, we can appreciate the basaloid island that, are, that uh, is uh, uh, palisating cells with a clefting at the border that uh, uh, can be able to distinguish it the, bas the basaloid island from the rest of the lesion. So it's very, very uh, easy to uh, do diagnosis. In fact, in some cases, uh, we can have also doubt if it's a melanocytic lesion or a basal cell carcinoma. Con focal laser microscopy it's uh, very very good to distinguish it the two uh, different lesions. Oh. Unfortunately I haven't here an image of basal cell carcinoma but anyway there is uh, this basaloid island that have palisading cells with clefting at the periphery. Okay, thank you. And then uh, there is also uh, the specific and peculiar features for uh, uh, seborrheic keratosis, for actinic keratosis, uh, for all the lesion. And then we also use in uh, cosmetic, uh, in com in cosmetic uh, things for uh, follow up the treatment, for uh, uh, test some cream, because uh, it's very good also to see collagen and also other things very important in cosmetic and also in inflammatory disease. We use also in psoriasis, uh, in, uh, yeah. Very interesting. So if there are no other questions from the floor, I think we can proceed with the, a more, uh, let's say.